So I'm filming. Remember the glowing lips tutorial I did? I'm filming that. So if I hop off for a second, I'm filming in IG. I normally don't film in IG because IG is a little bit more finicky, but I'm replying to a comment, just like I do on TikTok. I'm replying to a comment because y'all wanted that tutorial. But guess what? You're gonna get the full tutorial here and kind of like a little spicy rundown reel. Just trying something out. In case you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using clean canvas today, but I'm gonna use the shade medium. And the reason why is because I want this just to kind of blend in to my undertone. The look I'm talking about is a post back, not, not yesterday's post, but the day before that. So just two posts back. If you wanna go check it out, I'm going to do that exact look again. So I did use this palette again. I believe this one's back in stock again. So if you wanna get it, now's the time to get it. I just started with this shade on an E28 and I'm gonna do this side because I'm gonna do the other one. And I just went kind of to town here, I guess. <laughs> I just packed this in my crease. And the reason I have it just on the side here pressing and I don't have it facing the ceiling is because I really don't need the precision. I don't mind if a little bit of that goes onto my lid. I'm gonna make it a little bit more tacky here in a second, my lid that is. That way that shimmer really sticks because a lot of you were saying you were having a little bit of trouble with shimmers these shimmers and i'm going to show you how to make them just absolutely out of control in a good way let me zoom you in so you can kind of finish watch me tap this oh he's getting ready for his big heavy breathing session down there gene now i just grabbed a little bit of this shade oh not that much i got it got away from me it's running away okay about that much <laughs> there you go and from here, I'm just gonna take it and press it on my brow bone and just kind of smooth this all together a little bit more. Perfect. Benny's in there taking pictures of stuff. And by stuff, I mean brushes. Now I've grabbed this shade, brow bone. And if you're wondering, I'm not in a hurry. It's just this eye is so simple. I'm also kind of cleaning up with this shade right here. I know I feel a little rushed, but I'm really not. It's just that this is a very simple eye look. Look how smooth and pretty that looks now. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Perfect trouble getting your shimmers looking like they do in the pan on your eye so you want wherever you're going to apply that shimmer to be tacky let me give you a visual on my cheek I'm gonna apply powder and it's gonna be dry here now now I'm gonna put niacinamide serum here let that dry down now while that's drying down I'm applying my favorite tacky eyeshadow base it needs to be very even across the lid though now I love this brush for shimmers we're gonna load up the brush you can see it right there let me get it to focus so now we're gonna apply it over the powder now I picked up more. Now let's apply it on top of the tacky base. I mean, you can see that difference. You can't see through this one and you can still kind of see through that one. And you can definitely see when the light isn't hitting it. Now let's go across the tacky base. And you're actually gonna have less fallout as well because this base is gonna grab all that shimmer. A flat brush like this one here is also crucial for that wet lid look. Still not over that difference, hope this helps. So I went and filmed something. I'm, the lid color, I'll show you in just a second. I wanted to layer it up more. But do you see this difference? Now, obviously when the light hits it, but this is just extra, extra shimmery, right? Look at that. That's so cool. Anyways, I'll be posting this. I might post this tonight. I don't know, I have so many good ideas right now. I feel so inspired, I love it. Ooh, I just love being helpful. So this is the color that I have on my lid. And this is the one that I used in that video. And I'm just gonna continue to layer this up. Isn't this gorgeous? But what you did see in the video was a more smoothed out crease here. It's going to be smooth with the E28, but right now I'm just packing on that color because I didn't want it to be a cut crease. So let's go ahead and grab our E28 now. And I'm just gonna take the tip of the brush and all I did was just kind of press it in here just to soften that line and just kind of tap that sparkle, not quite into the visible crease, 
but into my hidden crease. And when I say visible crease, let me give you a tip, another tip on this particular palette. Um, you might be over blending. I will say this is probably one of the softest formulas of mattes that I've ever seen. And when we, even the way I'm tapping this together right now, that's gonna be so much more delicate than if I go in here and do this because these shadows will blend away. They will. And that's the formula of them. It's not a bad thing, but I will say when, when things are released, it really does help to have a lot more education with them because y'all can learn it. I, I don't want to ever assume that y'all aren't going to learn something or even that you already know something because there's still things that I don't know. But I just, I want y'all to, if you have this palette and you're going, oh no, try that. Try just being a little bit more delicate with it because it's a very delicate palette. That's not a bad thing because it's, it's innovation, but it's a very... So what I did was I scooped out some gel liner on an E26 because that's a whopping wing I have on in that video. It's a whopper. I love this gel liner, by the way. I think this one is my favorite gel liner. If we're talking gel liners, this is my favorite gel liner. And the packaging is so cute. Totally not a gimmick. It's amazing, amazing formula. And the reason I scooped it out is because you want to put your lid back on your gel liner as fast as possible. So I'm going to put that excess liner here on the back of my hand, and I will be using all of it. And then that wing I have on is pretty massive because I have on massive lashes, and I couldn't believe that y'all liked that look. Because y'all usually, sometimes you're like, oh, I could never wear that. And I'm like, you could, it's fun. Wash us off. <laughs> That's my approach to makeup. I love it, but I'm so glad you'll like that look so much. Ooh. And I feel like a lot of formulas are that way and we don't realize it. And that's why tapping is just always a really good route to take because it's a lot more delicate than swiping. Just, just so you know, you get to a point where you can swipe and you know how much you can swipe and I would definitely be there, but I really show y'all the art of tapping because it's just so much easier to control. It's so much easier. If I am in a hurry, I would know how much to exactly pick up on my brush, what that looks like, how to go in here and do that, where certain areas need circles, but Tapping doesn't take that much longer and I can almost promise you, you're going to get the eyeshadow look that you want. So I showed this tip a little while ago and I don't think I explained myself the way I needed to because a lot of you were like, you're just gonna have fallout. And what I'm doing here is I have mascara on. So I already have my mascara on. It's not dry. So before it dries, if you press black eyeshadow into the base of your lashes, you will absolutely not have fallout that again, anything tacky is gonna grab powder. And then once it dries, it's dried with the mascara. So I'm just taking that and making sure that the base of my lashes are extremely dark because this is a more dramatic look. I would hope by now, if I'm doing something, you know that it's going to work. It's just going to. <laughs> I would never do anything just to get views. Y'all, you even notice that I don't drip things on my face. I just don't do things like that. There's nothing wrong with it, but I want my page to just be helpful. I don't want y'all to do something and go, well, Rose, you told me this was going to work and it didn't. That's not what I'm, that's not what we're here for. We're here to help. So I myself love the fun content, the drippy, the contouring all at once, the blush, everything on, blending. I think it's so much fun to watch but sometimes it doesn't always work the way it does in their beautiful videos. And I don't wanna have y'all trying to go somewhere and struggling and then crying before you go to your fun event. None of that. These lashes, these big old floofers, somehow they're so floofy, but they're so pretty. I love these. I wear these all the time recently. And then the, I wear another pair from Roquel lashes as well. Aren't they fun? So I just thought of something when I was putting on my lash and the first time that you put on lashes, they can be difficult. And I feel like that's really when we give up. So what I want you to do is if you're still not comfortable wearing lashes, put them on when you're not going anywhere. 
And what happens is they actually become easier to apply because right now these were a breeze to put on because from me wearing them so many different, so many times, they kind of already take that shape of my eye. So they are perfect and perfectly molded to the shape of my eye. So at least try your lashes two or three times before you give up on them and just put them on when you know you're not even going anywhere. So I am going to finish most of my face here, but before I set it and actually I can set it, but before I finish the rest of it, I am going to hop off and film probably one of the most revolutionary videos that I've ever done. Um, I was laying in bed with Douglas, my doggie, on my head. Maybe he gave me the idea. He whispered into my ear. But I had this idea, and I don't want to tell you what it is because people watch my stories. <laughs> But I want to be the first person to talk about it because it's really, really revolutionary. It's pretty wild. So I'm, I'm just so excited. I want to share it with y'all. But I'm not going to keep y'all in the dark about it for too long. I'll be posting it very soon. But I do want to make sure that it's right. So I might not come back on here and finish this look since the lips are there in that video. So I'm going to start with this. And I want to put on a more full coverage on top of it. I think I like this. I'm going to let y'all know. Y'all have seen me try this a million times. And I can make this work, but I don't love it. Let's really quickly swatch. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison eventually. Um, I don't. I like to do those in posts. So let's see if they're even similar in color. Again, I know it looks yellow, but for what it is, it doesn't matter because it is so sheer. And for me, I like layering that, but this just looks so, I mean, that's even more yellow. I just, let's zoom in. I just don't like this one. I don't know why, and I've tried it a million different ways, and I just can't bring myself to like it. We'll have to do a side. I'm cold, so I have to put on my half towel, half jacket, half looks like it could have been a puppy dog blanket jacket. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the elf and I'm just going to put this on the outer perimeter of the face. And when I say the outer perimeter, we could go a little bit on the cheekbone, but I'm not going to take it through the center because most of us would have texture here. We could get shiny through here. So we just want to put this, I'm going to show you where. Because even sometimes with me saying outer perimeter, it's like, okay, where? So it's just best to show. Could put it here, here, a little bit there. We could put a little extra back here. Pretty. So I actually love this product here with the C41. So let's take that and start to work it in. And it's okay if it goes here. We just don't want it to go from here over. And to tell you the truth, I haven't worn it in the center. It might be nice there. So if you are wearing it there, you're probably onto something. I would just want to practice and kind of use it when I wasn't going to film an important video, which I will do because I want to make sure that we give this a really fair review. It is pretty though. I, th I really like it. I think it just looks so nice. I, I really, really, really like it. So I'm going to do medium to full coverage. I like this foundation. I, have... <laughs> I do. I will say I prefer this one in the little bit in the cooler months because it is a little bit heavier. It is, but that's the vibe today. That's quite a bit there, but this is going to be for all the entire face, everything that I have here. I'm not, I'm actually just going to like close this. The color match is going to be really nice too. I'll just go ahead and smooth that out with this. And this right here is from Amazon. Just, just search makeup spatula. Kind of satisfying. We'll just keep watching it. <laughs> so 
Make sure it's nice and smooth on the skin first, and then we'll grab our brush. So the brush I'm using is a prototype. Stay tuned for that. And what I'm doing and why I'm using such a full coverage foundation is I wanna see if you're able to see that glow through the foundation. I feel like you can. This foundation is so beautiful. I'm gonna have to grab my E29 to go through there, but we'll get to that in just a second. Doug's snoring today too. I'm gonna grab an E29 here. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the foundation from here and I'm gonna to start to clean up and bring that foundation around my brows. And then I took it all the way across here. And believe it or not, when you take this foundation across here, it even helps blend it even more. But you, again, you need to be using a very light hand and tapping motions or we're just gonna wind up over blending everything. I'm grabbing some more. There we go. I'm gonna use some of the Sensual Skin Enhancer. This shade is so perfect for me because it's so peachy, but we're gonna use it as a corrector and that's gonna be enough for corrector, I'm telling y'all. And then whenever I'm using anything that really needs to kind of stay here, I don't want this corrector to kind of run away down here. So I'm gonna grab a C31 for this because I wanna keep that corrector exactly where it needs to be. And this brush just evens it out so perfectly because a lot of times when things crease, it's because they were not even on the surface. And the more even makeup is, the longer it wears and the less it creases. I'm gonna use some of the Sensual Skin Enhancer. This shade is so perfect for me because it's so peachy, but we're gonna use it as a corrector and that's gonna be enough for corrector, I'm telling y'all. And then whenever I'm using anything that really needs to kind of stay here. I don't want this corrector to kind of run away down here. So I'm gonna grab a C31 for this because I wanna keep that corrector exactly where it needs to be. And this brush just evens it out so perfectly because a lot of times when things crease, it's because they were not even on the surface. And the more even makeup is, the longer it wears and the less it creases. Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. This is going to be my actual highlighting concealer shade. This is 22P. And I'm, I'm definitely going a little bit heavier today with my makeup because I am going to film something. Again, I don't want to give it away, but I want to just go a little bit heavier today. I'm just going to highlight here. And highlighting the center of the face a good idea it's fun especially when you're going heavier I could have even went lighter with my concealer but sometimes I prefer to just lighten everything up with my powder it's a little bit safer bet because sometimes when that concealer is too light it's just gonna make everything look a little too white and then what happens with that is then it just casts more shadows so it's always better and it's your best bet. It's not always better, but it's your best bet to lighten with your powder. I'm also finding that when I'm using this smaller brush, I feel like it's really able to pinpoint the fine lines and really work that product in. And again, just keep it very, very smooth. And my under eyes have been looking pretty, pretty spicy. 
So I just wanted to update y'all with that. I was using the Anissa Beauty one, but I've really just started using this one because again, this really works it in because it's so small and I really, really, really want to pinpoint those areas. And even if you have smile lines, this, I'm telling you, because I definitely have fine lines. Now, before I set, obviously you know I've been doing this, but I have my powder already evened out on my puff here. And before I go in and set, I go in with that brush first and then I go in immediately with evened out powder on my puff. So important for it to be even. If it's not even, you might get patchiness and you might even get lifting and it's not gonna wear as well. So just make sure that's really even on the puff. And then I really want you to see how long I sit here and make sure that this is worked in. It's so important. Nobody talks about it. Everything always cuts. And that's why I'm so happy for the one minute slides. And then I'll set here with whatever's left. And this just goes to show you that you aren't wasting it when you even it out like that because it just keeps going and going. And since I am going to finish the rest of my face off camera for the very special video. I figured we would just set our forehead here because it's so satisfying. Hmm, <laughs> I love it. Okay, now let's finish underneath here with an E27. You're still gonna see pressing and no matter your technique or how you prefer to do things underneath here i definitely recommend pressing only because when we swipe think of it as this i hope you can see it fluff into the camera you can kind of see that it just fluffs into the eye so if you have sensitive eyes if it's not bothering you this is what i always say if it's not broken don't fix it but if your eyes are a little sensitive try pressing it because you're not fluffing that into your ah i got in my eye i <laughs> You're not fluffing it. And even if you delicately swipe back and forth, you still kind of run the chance of fluffing that into your eye. So just tap underneath here for sure, especially if you have the little E27. By the way, the glow is coming through. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I messed that here a little bit more. There we go. Look how pretty that looks. And you can see it on the forehead still where we placed it. It's coming through. I like it. Now I'm gonna grab the darkest brown which is this one. And I'm just going to apply that on the outer part of the eye. Sometimes I like to show makeup from farther back because you can see what that just did. It really just, because I'm applying it right here and not any farther down, that little bit of darkness just added a little bit more lift to the eye. What y'all need to remember is that you might not see that product immediately, but once everything kind of sits on the skin for a second, just give it a second. I know we want that instant gratification, but just give it a second. Look at that. Stunning. And then no texture. I think I just, I think I just found something. Ooh, I like it. Where did it go? Ooh. I am going to put on bronzer. And if you did not see yesterday's video, please go check it out. It was so helpful. So, so helpful. I'm going to grab my Gucci bronzer, 02, and a C40. And I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to start to press this into my hairline. I talk about why I love this color there. And I'm going to leave that link. But I also want to show you how I use the C40. I want you to see the product on there. Oh yeah, you can see that product. So if you turn, especially if you turn it to the side. So when I use the C40, the shorter end goes towards my ear. And if you just kind of stamp, the density is so perfect on this brush, it doesn't flop. Okay, you, you've used a, quite a few angle brushes, but I you might not have used one that doesn't flop. This one just stamps that bronzer. I When I started to test brushes, all of the ones that I'd ever used always flopped. They flop back and forth. And by flop, I mean like that. That does nothing for me. Nothing. <laughs> so I wanted an angle brush 
that would not flop especially because I like to use it like that and if it flops I'm not gonna get that look at that that's pretty precise now I'm gonna blend that out more but it's placing that bronzer exactly where I want it I can't get over this the glow underneath I I really cannot get over it and it doesn't look shiny or greasy it just looks like the perfect glow I'm really really excited y'all I to be honest I hesitated even finding this because I don't love this one and I was like it's a dupe and I'm just not gonna vibe with it honestly elf that's me applauding with the product <laughs> So I'm going to do a rough outline and when I say rough outline I'm not going to worry too much about perfecting with the lip liner. Jean, no one wants to hear you take a bath. I smiled over there. Jean, you okay over there with your snorts? And then I'm going to use this Dior lipstick and the reason I'm going to use this one is because it's a really pretty nude but it's gonna dry completely because we're gonna top this with something. That is if Jean is not turning into a monster and eats me. I think it might be the latter. Now before this sets, I am going to mix it together with the lip liner. And this is where I really do perfect the lip line. So I just checked and this is still in stock. I'm just gonna use this right on top. Isn't that pretty? And it's Sephora collection, so it's really affordable. And the reason I wanted to put it on top of the mat is because if I put this on top of, say, a gloss or really creamy lipstick, it's just gonna mix in. That's pretty. I'm so into glowing lips right now. Mm, I love it. Now, I'm going to hop off and I'm going to go film the secret spicy video. I'm so excited. I love makeup so much. And I love helping all of you with your makeup. So, I'm not going to finish my face because I can't because I need to film the video. But this eye, super simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love y'all so much. And I might post that video tonight. I don't know what I'm going to post tonight. But I'm going to post and... I will see you there. So I think I cracked the code on finding your perfect contour. So we're gonna grab black concealer and white concealer. Hang on. Now mix them together, but wait, trust the process. I'm not having you put on gray. Now grab a full coverage foundation in your shade and we're gonna mix it into our gray mixture. And there you have it, my perfect contour shade. Now remember, I have lots of videos on contour, but contour is supposed to mimic a shadow. Even if you don't contour every day, and I don't contour every day, it's good to know your shade just in case. And if you're looking for something that you might already have, just to play around, LA Girl White Concealer, so affordable, and it's CVS. The full coverage foundation, mix it all together, and there you have it. So let's place it, and now let's blend it. Clean up with powder foundation. This is such a good makeup lesson, I hope you try it.